Hello, so I'm doing a, today's video is about what is the actual process when you sell a house to an investor. I apologize already for the horrible lighting, um, but I'm doing this in the car. Now, um, so I did a video earlier about what the process is when you sell a house that's listed with an agent, and there's gonna be contrast with this process today. So uh, first thing is you're probably, con either you con are contacted by an investor like me via mail or a phone call, uh, something like that, and then you respond, or you uh, you have reached out to me, right, via the internet or from a referral, and you say, I'm interested in selling my house to an investor for whatever reason, we're not getting into that today, and then uh, me, myself, I, or one of my uh, team members will come to your house and spend between 20 and 45 minutes there. Uh, what happens during that process is uh, you're gonna give us a quick tour of the property, we're gonna look at it, and then uh, we're gonna sit down and just talk about what, you know, whether this is right for you, whether we're a good fit, um, you know, is this something that uh, you really need to do? Uh, is this something where we can help you? And if we can't, uh, we're not gonna do business and that's fine, there are no charges of any, of any, of any kind. And we're looking really to see what kind of repairs we're going to have to make, what possible um, uh, improvements we can make, or is this something where we need to knock it down and build from scratch? Those are the kinds of things we're looking for. Um, whether the bones are salvageable or not, uh, we're looking at the foundation. Those are the kinds of things we're looking for, the size of the lot, you know, what we can do with it. And there's times where we will add a floor to it, we'll knock it down, we'll add an addition to it, or we'll just renovate what's there. So. Uh, after that, we're going to give you uh, our number, right? What we, what we can pay, and uh, uh, we're going to, you know, hopefully you're going to accept, and you're going to be pleasantly surprised with our number, and you are going to say, "I'll take it." And then what happens after that is um, your attorney, the seller's attorney, is going to generate a contract and send that contract to our attorney. Now that process of going back and forth with the contract really should only take a couple of days, but very often it takes a couple of weeks. And that's usually because um, the attorneys want to just justify their exorbitant fees. That's typically what happens. And then um, after we get through all the contract issues, we're going to sign the contract, we're going to send you a deposit, uh, you're going to sign the contract, send it back, and we are in contract. Congratulations. Uh, now, what happens after that is really up to you. So sometimes sellers want to close quickly and sometimes sellers don't want to close quickly right I've probably sold more houses to sellers who want to who need to know that they're in contract but need a lot of time then sellers who need to close quickly so for example I just closed on something in Merrick where uh, I think it was a contract for 19 months right the woman got sick in the middle of the process I did not want to kick her out she was dying of terminal cancer she passed away and I bought the property from her children uh, things like that happen all the time I can wait so um, if you want to close quickly, it usually I would say the quickest that can happen maybe is 10 days. We got to get, we have to get. Really depends on where you are because we have to get title and we have to get municipal searches from from your municipality. So, if you're in the town of North Hempstead for a while, for example, that could take a long time. Uh, some villages are very quick. So, once we get into contract, we go to order title. If you need to close quickly, we'll close as quickly as we can. We just have to get title back. If you want to close slowly or you need time, you need time to get stuff out or somebody's living there that's leaving <coughs> or you're living there and you need to find some place to go, we will wait. Now, during that period of time, usually, not all the time, but usually, we will want to get a one hour window of showing the property. Now, let me explain what that means. During that hour, what I usually do is I get potential buyers into the property. Now, the reason why I get potential buyers into the property is because... I'm just not smart enough to figure out what work to do and what work not to do. So very often I'll get feedback. I have a lot of people that have seen properties that I've fixed up and done, and they now want, they told me, your next property that you do, I want you to call me. So we call them, and we want feedback from them. So a couple of simple examples. If there are small bedrooms, we're going to ask them whether we want us, do you want, they want us to combine it into one big bedroom. If there's a big bedroom, maybe they want us to cut it up into a small bedroom. Uh, sometimes there's a half a bathroom and we ask them, well, do you want a full bathroom? Things like that. Just things that we want to know. And if we get the same feedback from a lot of buyers, we know that is really where we want to be. Um, we then also have, at the same time, we have contractors coming in. So I don't just have general contractors coming in. I have tradesmen coming in. So I might have a plumber, I might have an electrician. I might have more than one of each of those. Plumbers, electricians, uh, carpenters, sheetrock guys. I might have finished guys, tile guys, um, things like that. A kitchen guy, a couple kitchen guys. So I want to get feedback. So I take what the people told me 
um, and I say, listen, it looks like we're going to need to put up a wall here, or sometimes we need to make an extension here, sometimes we need to chop off the second floor and build a bigger second floor, or dorm it out, uh, dorm it things out, sometimes we need to knock it down and just go from scratch, and I need just a ballpark back of the napkin figure from a lot of these guys on what it's going to cost for a certain amount of square footage, and that is what I do. Now, the reason why I have these people come in before we close is because I want work to start the day we close. Literally go from the closing with the keys to the contractors and get things started. The only way that can happen is if I do this sort of due diligence and this work before uh, I close. So that is why I want to have it. So one showing, usually one hour, that's usually all I need. And during that time, I really get an idea of what work I need to do. Again, I wish I was... Uh, you know, I had this incredible vision and brains to figure this stuff out beforehand. I just, I'm not that bright. So I am going to bring people in, get, uh, you know, for an hour, it's going to be a madhouse, small army of people coming in, in and out, in and out, people waiting outside, get in, take a look. I need you guys to give me quotes on uh, redoing those bathrooms. That's the kind of thing I need quotes on uh, redoing the kitchen and I need to ex expand out 20 feet. That, that is the kinds of things I do all the time. So. Uh, during that time, that's the one time. It's a one, I'd say one in a thousand I need to do a second showing, but usually it's one time. Now, um, what are you doing there this time? So after we run title, very often there's ti open title issues, things that you don't even know about. So there might be an open permit from 1956 when the property was built for a garage uh, extension. And <coughs> you may already know that this was closed and there is a certificate of completion with the local municipality, but that this kind of thing where you may need to get it, uh, get it or help us get it, and um, sometimes somebody passed away that used to own the property and we need a death certificate. Sometimes there are legal probate issues. There's all kinds of things. Also, if there's a mortgage on the property, you're going to need to get the the payoff letter, right? Or sometimes your attorney will order it, but we're going to need information. Uh, we're not going to need information, but your attorney will need information from you to order the payoff letter if there are any open liens, right? Very, I can't tell you how many times we. Uh, gone to contract on the property, and there's some liens the guy didn't know about. Some contractor put a mechanics lien on the property from a long time ago, and it really should have been taken off. But these are things we're taking care of, right? The only your only responsibility as a seller during this period of time um, is to is to get us clear title, right? Clear up all these title issues. Now, sometimes there's nothing, and sometimes there's a lot of things, right? I just I just uh, went to contract, and the guy went to the town of Hempstead and he had two open permits from a long time ago and now he's working on fixing them and that's it. Um, that's the kind of thing that you need to do as a seller. Um, depending on what we agreed on, you may or may not need to clean anything out. You may need be able to leave everything there. Um, depends really what we discuss and what we are contractually agreed upon, right? What, what did we agree upon and put it in writing? Um, so that's pretty much what you're doing. Now this is in contrast to um, selling a property with an agent where really you're on a buyer's timeline, right? So as I said, I bought more properties from people who just needed time. They did not want to be in a buyer's timeline. So in the example I gave before, where I was in contract for 19 months with a woman who got terminal cancer, I'm moving the camera here, um, what happened is that if I was a regular buyer, she would have been really in trouble, right? The buyer would have had to get their kids into school, would have told her to get out of there, you know, would have told her to leave. I was able to wait 19 months. And that's one of the advantages you get when you sell to an investor. In general, the general advantages of selling to an investor are the convenience and certainty that are provided. So my number is my number, right? It's not gonna change. Um, I'm not gonna bring an inspector in there. I'm not gonna bring an appraiser in there. Um, and because I don't bring those people in there, I don't come back and go, oh, I need a $10,000 adjustment. That doesn't happen. So that's the certainty. I have no contingencies on my contract. So basically, I have no outs. The only way I can get out of the contract is if there's a title problem. Now, and that's happened, I honestly believe, in the last 10 years once that there was a title problem. Actually, twice. Um, but, you know, that it would have been a problem with anybody you sell to. It's just that it came up with me and we parted as friends and that was it. Um, so I have no contingencies. Now, in general, when you are selling to uh, a standard buyer, right, usually listing with an agent and selling to a standard buyer, they have a mortgage contingency and that is without a doubt, a get out of contract free card. I can tell you from somebody with 17 years in the mortgage business, there are plenty of people who are getting denied for mortgages who really are not, shouldn't be denied, but it's very easy to deny for a mortgage. Documents expire all the time. And somebody who just changed his mind that has a mortgage contingency can get out of any contract. So 
you need to understand that. Uh, so that's part of the certainty that an investor provides because I have no contingencies in my contract. I have no way out of the contract. And I'm not going to change my number and the convenience that I provide. So I'm not going to show the house 50 times, right? I told oh, I'm back. I'm finally, apparently I found a dead spot on the southern state where Verizon doesn't work. So I'm not going to show the property 50 times. I'm not going to come back to you uh, with issues. I'm going to close whenever it works on your time frame, right? So that's the big difference. Why close on your time frame, not a buyer's time frame. Um, that's part of the convenience. And hopefully you understand now what the benefits are of selling to an investor. This is not... This is not a predatory situation where I'm taking advantage and stealing from widows and orphans. I am. We are simply trading some of the money you could get for your property for the certainty and convenience that an investor provides. And if that if that doesn't work, right, if you don't want to give up that money and you want to squeeze every dollar out of it, then you should list it, right, with me or with any other agent. So I hope this was clear as to how the process works. Your responsibilities are pretty simple. We get into contract. You got to talk to your attorney about that. And then you gotta make sure title's clear. If title is clear and there's no mortgage and no issue show up, then there's really nothing for you to do. Just show up to the closing and get paid. Um, and again, the beauty of, a, you know, people wanna know how long it takes. It can take as quick as 10 days, two weeks, depending on which, which uh, you know, which town or village you're in. Um, um, or it can take much longer if you want it to take longer. But it, we close on your time frame. I hope this was helpful. Thank you very, very much for watching. I'm gonna shut this up before I get into a car accident.